How do the roots of a polynomial relate to the roots of its derivative? Let's draw a picture. Let's draw a picture of a complex polynomial using a phase plot. The dark smudges show where the output is zero. So the middle of those dark spots, those are the roots. Now to get a feeling for this, I'm gonna move those roots around. I'm gonna wiggle those roots around and I'll draw little red squares at the roots so we can identify them more readily. And I'll draw little blue circles at the roots of the derivative. So the red rectangles are the roots of my polynomial P and the blue circles are located at the roots of P prime, the, the derivative. And as I wiggle the roots of the original polynomial around, I notice something. The blue roots of the derivative are sitting inside the red roots of the polynomial. So this is what I wanna show. I wanna show that if P prime of Z is equal to zero, if Z is a root of the derivative of P, then Z is inside the roots of my original polynomial P. Oh, okay, I'm actually gonna prove the contrapositive and an equivalent statement. So instead of proving that, we're gonna show that if a point Z is outside of the roots of the polynomial P, then z isn't a root of the derivative. Then p prime of z is not zero, right? That's equivalent to our original statement. This is what I wanna show. I wanna show that if I've got a point z which is outside of the roots of my original polynomial p, then that point is not a root of the derivative. Now the trouble is that word outside. And as so often happens in mathematics, the challenge is not just coming up with a proof, it's figuring out what to prove in the first place. How do we formalize this idea of being outside? I mean, are you outside of a forest, uh, you know, as long as you aren't actually climbing a tree? You know, can you be inside a forest just if there are trees around you? How, how do you formalize that? How do you make that a precise enough statement so we could actually try to prove it? So here's how we're going to formalize this. Well, here's a picture of the complex plane and I'll throw out some points. Here's some points uh, represented as little red squares in my picture here. And of course, I'm thinking of those little red squares as being the roots of my original polynomial P. And here is a, uh, a blue dot, which is uh, representing a point Z. And certainly from the picture, it looks like that point Z is outside of the red points, but what does that actually mean? Well, for the exports, you know, what I, what I mean is that that point Z is not in the convex hull of the red points. Now here, what that means you know, specifically is that I can find a, a witness to its being outside. The witness to its being outside is that I can find a line, a straight line, which separates the blue point Z from all the little red squares. That straight line divides the plane into a blue and into a red half space with all the red squares in that red half space and the blue point in that blue half space. Well, now I can write down a theorem with enough precision that I have some hope of being able to prove it. Right? If there's a line separating uh, my point Z from the roots of my polynomial P, then P prime of Z is non-zero. This is what I wanna show. I've formalized this notion of Z's being outside of the roots of P by saying there's a line that separates the point Z from the roots of P. And if there's a line that separates the point Z from the roots of P, then P prime of Z is non-zero. Well, we've got a formal statement, so let's try to prove it. Let's try to prove this statement. So we've got points R1, R2, da, 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 in the complex plane, and I'm gonna build a polynomial P with those roots. Now pick some point W, and W is outside of the roots of P, and that's witnessed by the fact that there's a line, a line that separates the roots of P, those red squares, from the point W, the blue dot. Now our goal is to show that whenever W is outside of the roots of P, I need to show that the derivative of P at the point W is non-zero. So I'm gonna draw a line segment from uh, my first root, R1. Uh, I'm gonna draw a line segment from R1 to the point W, and then I'm gonna draw a line perpendicular to that segment through the point W. Now consider the helper function, uh, f of z equals the absolute value of z minus r1. So f is just measuring the distance between its input and the point r1, the first root. Now if I were to wiggle w, even infinitesimally into the half space given by that perpendicular line, then I'd see that the distance increases, right? That means that f prime of w is not equal to zero. Technically what I'm asking you to consider is the directional derivative into that half space. Now we'll do the same kind of game, but with a new helper function. Uh, this time f of z equals the product 
absolute value z minus r1 times absolute value uh, z minus r2, right? So f is now the product of the distances from its input to the uh, root r1 and the root r2. And again, draw a line segment, this time from R2 to the point W, drop that perpendicular, and I've got two half spaces now, two blue half spaces. And if I consider a vector pointing into both of those half spaces at the same time, well, then I can see that the directional derivative of F in a vector pointing into both half spaces, that directional derivative is positive. And in particular, that means the derivative of F at that point W is not zero. Now I can do the same kind of game with the point R3, with the point R4, with the point R5. I'm drawing a line segment from the root to the point W, dropping those perpendiculars and intersecting all of the half spaces. And then I consider a helper function F, which is now just the product of the distances from its input to all of the roots. And now pick a vector that points into all of the blue half spaces simultaneously. And the fact that I can find a vector that points into all of the blue half spaces, that means that f prime of w does not vanish. Well, why does this work in general? I mean, this is just one picture, right? Well, how do I know this is always going to work? Well, if you're standing at the point w and you're looking out at the roots, you'd see those uh, roots spanning an angle of alpha. The half spaces would then intersect in an angle of pi minus alpha, 180 degrees minus alpha. Remember that W's being outside of the roots was witnessed by the existence of a line that separated W from the red squares. That means that alpha, the angle that the roots take up in your vision if you're standing at the point W, that angle is less than pi, which means that pi minus alpha is bigger than zero, which means there's a vector that is in all of the half spaces, which means that f prime at W is not zero, which means that p prime of W is not zero, which is exactly what we wanted to show. We did it. We proved the Gauss-Lucas theorem. We've shown that the roots of the derivative of p prime are contained in the convex hull of the roots of the original polynomial p, where p is some non-constant polynomial. And we proved this in just a lovingly geometric way.